cup. You know, I know you like to talk. Yeah? complex story and one we're still learning a lot about. NBC Bay Area released the story Monday afternoon detailing the incident regarding Washington and a 2016 video of a girl being sexually assaulted. It's important to know Washington wasn't involved in the assault and didn't film the assault either. According to reports, Washington held on to the video on his phone and then in 2018 sent the video back to the victim along with a text message. Since the girl was 15 at the time, under California law, this counts as distributing child pornography and it falls under the revenge porn law because he's accused of inflicting emotional damage on the victim. The greatest redemption story in the history of football. Now, let's be honest, man. I grew up in the 90s. Nebraska running backs don't really have the best history. Lawrence Phillips. That's all I'm going to say. But Maurice Washington is different. The thing about Maurice Washington, and yes, we see the clips, we see the great athletic ability, but the thing about him and his crime he was accused of committing, the crime was really just having the clip and giving it back to the young lady. He was not implicated in any contact. He didn't set up the attack. He wasn't involved in the attack. He didn't record the attack. Somebody gave him a 10 second clip of an oral act. He kept the clip on his phone for some odd reason and then gave it back to the young lady who he thought looked familiar. That's the crime. 30 days jail, two year probation. Which means right now he's free of charge. Before I hear anybody born before 1984 talk about how he has no rights for possessing child pornography. I remember back in the day R. Kelly had a sex tape. I want you to go ask your uncles if they seen it. They're going to say no. But they had it. That's the same with Ken. What's going on? Just possessing it was something he was a minor himself. A minor sees porn, they're going to go ahead and try to keep it. Let's be honest with, us, with ourselves. So now that he's free of charge, he's free of all probation, his name is going to clear, we break it down to the actual ability. Four-star running back, five in the country. He automatically steps on Grambling's field. The best running back in the SWAT. There's not a question. There's not a doubt in my mind. Grambling has the best running back core. Period. We can talk about Jackson's receiving core how they are deeper than most Power 5 schools like they have. We could talk about how the coaching ability of Fred McNair to get nothing out of some, something out of nothing is unquestioned. I have. We could talk about the speed of Florida. I have. Or the offensive quote-unquote genius of Coach, Coach Maynard. The way to stop all of that is play keep away. If you don't got the ball, all them receivers don't mean anything. All the speed or offense don't mean anything. You have a man who was giving the Big Ten fits, catching out of the backfield, running up the middle, running on the sides, 
was dominating the Mac. Yeah, you see that? That's Michigan State. Do you think you're gonna have problems against the Sun Belt and against the SWAC? We're looking for a big game, game one, Mr. Washington. This is the redemption story. The Gramlin and the SWAC have been waiting for. Gramlin is back. And I said it before and I say it again. The two headed monster in Louisiana, last game of the season, is their championship game. Because with this man on the field, you ain't getting the ball. Coach Simmons, I'm out.